Good evening everyone and thank you very much for joining me at this time in this tutorial. So today we are going to develop uh, again a very amazingly beautiful 3D game in uh, using Python. So we guys will be using Ursina engine for this 3D uh, Pong game that we are going to develop using uh, this Python coding. So let's dive into the platform, start coding the game. So the first thing I would like to do is, I would like to import everything from Ursena. So that's the reason uh, I'm using this asterisk over here. Import asterisk. Right, then app is equals to Ursena. So that's the basic structure of Ursena, am I right? So this, what this code will give you, it will give you a window on which you can bring all the objects you want to see uh, in your game. So let me just run this code and tell you what all things we are going to get from this code. Okay, so it is saying that Okay, so that's the Ursina window, right? So with the help of these three lines of code, you can easily create a window on which you can bring all the objects you want to see in your game. Okay, so once you're done with that, now if you want to define a specific color for uh, the window which just appeared, so what you can do, you can make use of this thing, window.color. Right, so this is the property with the help of which you can change the background of your uh, game window. So I would like to see an orange color of window. So color.orange and let me now save it. And now if I will uh, run this code. So now it's, a, it's an orange window which I am getting. Okay, now next thing that I would like to do is let's create a table on this orange window. So table is equal to entity. Okay, and it's for this model we can have a queue, right? And then for color, uh, I would like to have a green color of table. So color dot green. Okay, and let's define a scale also for this table. So we need to define the numbers for all the three axes. So x axis, y axis, and on z, I would like to keep 14. Okay, it's time for us to now define the position also. You know, the position at which you would like to see the table. So I would like to see it at this position 0 comma 0 comma 0 so it will uh, this will help us in getting the table right in the middle of the screen and then if you want you can have a texture also so i would like to have a texture of white cube so that's what we used in the previous uh, uh, game also if you remember white cube now let me save the change and run this code and see whether we will be able to get a good table or not in the middle yes we are able to see a green table but it's not looking like a table it's, it's looking like a simple bar right why because uh, <coughs> we are able to see the side view of the table uh, we need to we need the top view we would like to see the top view of the table right in order to uh, see the table properly now how should we uh, rotate the position rotate the camera's position so that we can see the whole table this code has created for us now that's the question so it's very simple we can make use of this camera dot position right and let's have it positioned at this point so 0 comma 15 comma minus 26 right so if I will position my camera at this point, let's see what is going to happen. Okay, so I am not able to see the table. Uh, 
let me just change this to 1.5 then if I will run this code whether I will be able to see the table or not okay it's it's visible to us now and it's looking quite cool okay fine 1.5 you know I would like to see the top view of it so let me just do one thing let me keep this camera's position this is equal to this and let me just rotate the camera along the x-axis so for rotating the camera along the x-axis we can use this camera dot rotation underscore x and let's uh, rotate it by 30 degrees how about this i hope i will be able to see the table more properly now yeah that's the view which i wanted to get and you know now we are able to see all the sides of the queue properly right i hope uh, you're enjoying this thing okay it's time for us to now define paddles right so we are going to it's it's a two player game right so we are going to have two paddles on this uh, green table so one paddle i am the first paddle i would like to define over here for the player a and the second one uh, here for the player b fine so let's hit this cross button for closing the window and just before just after this uh, code where we have defined which is uh, which is helping us in creating the table on the window let's define the variable in which i would like to save the code for the player one's paddle right so paddle a and we'll use the same thing entity the one that we used here right because it is also a kind of you know it, it's also a kind of bar thing so entity is the function with the help of which we can create it so for this parent i would like to pass uh, this thing table right and then uh, i would like to have a green black color of paddle okay so color dot black and then we can have this model is equal to cube okay what else can we do we can uh, define a proper scale for the paddle a so that's the scale i would like to keep for this paddle a 0 0.05 right and then we can uh, define a position like the way we defined a specific position for this table over here okay so position and it should be equal to what it should be equal to this 3.5 7.22 so where am i getting these uh, uh, numbers from you know when you will practice it on your own definitely you will be able to uh, get a good hold on these things you will be able to get these numbers yourself fine so practice makes a man perfect if you not practice definitely you will not be able to understand these numbers which i'm passing here it's very easy it, it's it's very easy concept in 2D, what happens? We consider x and y axis. In 3D games, we need to consider all the three axes, right? X, y, and z. Okay, let's now define a collider over this, uh, uh, what we call it, this paddle. Why? Because, you know, there will be a ball and if it collides, if it will collide at any point with that, uh, with this paddle A, I would like it to go in the other direction so that's the reason we need something so as to keep a check on the collision part also and that's the reason i am defining a collider also for this paddle a right in uh, in pi game what happens we use rectangle concept here what happens we use collider thing right okay let's now run this game and see whether we'll be able to get the required output or not so we are able to see a very beautiful bar on this table and that's our player a's paddle right 
Okay, now it's time for us to define uh, one more paddle and that is going to be for the player B. So paddle, paddle B. Now what we can do instead of using this whole thing again, we can simply make use of this duplicate keyword, right? So duplicate and, and then we can pass this paddle A as a parameter to this uh, duplicate function. And also we can, because we want to have this paddle B in this, uh, you know, opposite, we want to see it opposite to this paddle A. So that's the reason the Z should be different of this paddle B. That is the reason we need to pass uh, something which can help us in getting the paddle on the other end of the table. So Z is equal to minus 0.62. If you will put here, definitely you will be able to see the paddle on the other end of the table. Let me run this game and show you the output. Okay, so now we are getting two beautiful paddles and uh, we are able to see the, them on the table and this is paddle A and this one is paddle B. Right, uh, it's time for us to now define a line somewhere in the center, okay, uh, so as so that we can divide the uh, this table into two different parts. So, the, so this part is going to be of uh, this player A and this part is going to be of this player B, right. Okay, let me just close this uh, window. Fine. I hope uh, this thing, this much of code is clear to all of you. In case you have any issues, anything you want to ask, please go ahead and let me know in the comment section. Whatever issues you have, you can share it with me in the comment box. Okay. Okay. And, uh, let me, let me uh, do one thing before defining the line. Let's uh, define some text also so that the user who is going to play the game he can know he can know that which paddle is uh, uh, which paddle can be used for the player A and which is uh, of the player B. So that is also very important. So what we can do here, just after this code, we can make use of this text function, right? So. Here, I would like to see player A, sorry, player A, right, and let's give it a scale also, scale, uh, let's give it this. And then we need to define the position also. We, will, we, we, we want to see the text getting reflected. So I want to see it at this point, minus point 0.1, comma, point 0.32. Let me just save the changes and see whether I will be able to see the sphere A getting reflected on this or not. Yes, I am able to see this player A now on this display window, right? Uh, I am copying this whole code and I am putting it over here. It's time for us to do the same thing for player B also. So player B, okay, and scale is going to be 2, position is going to be, uh, let me make it minus 0.32. If I will do it like this, if I will pass minus 3.2 over here, definitely it is going to come on the opposite end but it is coming on this bar. I would like to see it somewhere down over here. So instead of this 0 0.32, let's make it 0 0.4. I think that will give us a proper output. Yes, uh, this is looking perfectly fine now. Okay, so we are done with defining the required text also on the game window. Now, let's define a line somewhere in the middle of the table. So line is equals to, again, we'll make use of this entity thing. For this parent, we can pass table, right? And then for this model, we can pass uh, quadrilateral. Okay, and let's define a proper scale also for this. So 0.88 
then 0.2 and 0.1 we can have time for us to define a position for uh, this line that we are drawing so I would like to see it getting reflected right in the center right so what shall be the position that's what we need to first see so position can be let's make it 0 comma 3.5 comma minus 0.2 right now if I will save the change and run this game let's see where we will get the line okay so it is showing us this error now why is it showing us this error because I haven't put this thing over here I think now if I will save the change and run it the round brackets were missing earlier so that's the reason we were getting an error yes I am getting a very beautiful line and that too in the center of this uh, uh, in the middle of this table it's good it's great so it is now dividing this table into two parts this part belongs to this layer a and this part belongs to this layer b right let me just close the window and now it's time for us to define the code with the help of which we can uh, get a ball kind of thing on the uh, table so ball is equal to again using this entity because we are creating a new entity right so to this parent i would like to pass table and then model should be equal to what you guys have to guess and tell me what should uh, the model be equal to so it should be equal to a sphere that is absolutely right please don't make it cube okay and what kind of uh, ball would you like me to define on the table green color or red color or black color let's make it red i think red is going to look good on the green color table we have on the display uh, for a game so scale let me just pass 0 0.05 and now if i will run the game i hope i will be able to see a beautiful ball i am not able to see any ball here why now that's what we'll have to find out so ball scale okay we haven't defined the position for this ball you know that's the reason why it's not visible to us let's do a thing let's put a comma and find a position quickly for the ball so i would like to see the ball at this position 3.71 what what we have taken for this it is minus 0.2 right for this line so i want to see it right on the top of the line so minus 0.2 i can pass here and let's now run this game okay so we are able to see a red color ball on this tape it's amazing right so the way we have defined collider for these two paddles let's define this collider thing for this ball also right okay so we are good to go now fine now it's time for us to uh, uh, you know define the code with the help of which we can make the paddles move so i want the uh, i want the user that if he presses the right direction key the paddle should start moving towards the right and if he presses the left direction key the paddle should start moving towards the left that's what i want to see uh, for paddle b for paddle A, we are going to define two different keys with the help of which we will try. We we we, we need to uh, the we need to control the motion movement of the paddle uh, B. Okay, for paddle B, we are going to have a different. We are going to have two different keys with the help of which we, uh, the player will be controlling the movement of the paddle. And for paddle A, we are going to have two different keys with the help of which player A will be controlling or the movement of the paddle right so we can have a function up uh, we can have this update function here right so let's first define the two keys for paddle b with the help of which uh, the user player b will be able to control the movement along the x axis of this paddle b so paddle b dot x it should be equal to what let me tell you that so i would like to just copy this thing and put it over here 
okay and let's make it uh, let's add this thing held underscore keys and if the right arrow key is pressed so i would like to multiply it by time dot dt okay let me now just save this code and run the game once and see whether this code is going to work for us or not so it is giving us this error why it is giving us an error parallel b parallel b is there or not yeah so parallel b dot x let me just see what is the error i am getting int object has no attribute time okay so here we are getting an error okay i need to put an asterisk sign here right that's the reason i was getting an error now uh, if i will run the code i think i will be able to come over here. okay let me now check whether i am able to move this player b's paddle in the right side or not so i'm pressing my right direction key and i'm able to move it in the right side see it's beautiful right Similarly, if you want to see it uh, moving in the left side, we can have uh, this left arrow over here. And in place of this plus, we need to have a minus sign. Let's now run this game and see whether we are going to get the required output or not. So I'm able to now move it in both the direction and the movement is extremely smooth. I am really enjoying this game okay perfect let me close this window so it's time for us to define the code with the help of which we can you know player a can move the paddle a along the x-axis in both the direction so what i am doing i'm copying this whole code and i am putting it over here let's replace this these b's with a's like this so if the player will press the let's say a but a key the or else uh, we can make it d right so it will go in the uh, left direction right direction and if the user will press the a key so it will go in the left direction right yeah let me save the changes and run this game and see whether we'll be able to move both the paddles now or not so i'm able to move this uh, paddle b of player a player b and i'm able to move the paddle of player a also and it is the movement is so smooth you know it's amazing so this is what i want to wanted to tell you in this lecture so this is the first part of the pong game which i am shooting right now Tomorrow I will be showing you uh, the final thing, right? So we'll be defining the collision part. We'll be working on the collision part and, you know, the movement of these uh, uh, player A, player B, paddle and the movement of this ball. So tomorrow we are going to work on that. So please be there in the lecture. Now before ending this meeting, I would like to uh, visit the comment section. If I have anything to answer, definitely I would... Uh, love to answer the queries just give me a short moment i am almost there okay i hope you guys enjoyed this lecture chandan yadav uh, can you uh, can you take a session on download python and how to run the game in it chandan i think i've explained everything related to the basics uh, uh, you know the question which you have asked i've already given the answer in the very first lecture and I've already covered a lot related to the basics of Python. So, uh, you know, it's my request to you. Please go ahead and check my channel, which is with name Gaurav Kumar Jain. You can find it on YouTube very easily. Just put my name in the search box and right on the top, you will see my channel. So you can check the basics. Base, uh, you can check the tutorials in which I've explained the basics of Python. So you will, you'll find all the things related to basics. You are, you'll find all the tutorials related to the basics of Python over there on my channel. Check out the tutorials. Definitely, 
uh, you will be able to understand the basic things and after that you can try these advanced things which i'm teaching right now right and these are not so advanced they are very simple it's what i did is i uh, installed this ursina on my uh, device the way i i install other packages i install this ursina also and after that i imported it here and then after that's the code you know which i have defined in the sublime text platform so as to create this amazingly beautiful 3d pongi and it's very simple to be very honest with you once the only thing that you need to know is how to download and install the packages at the in the correct folder that's it so once you are once you are done with that automatically when you will run your code and make sure you know whenever you are coding something uh, the file in which you are putting all the code for example if i talk about this pong.py file in which i have put this whole python code i have saved it in a folder which i have created inside a folder in which all my python files are there that is the reason i don't get errors you know i am able to run this and i am able to get the output also okay then we have vishal meena hello sir when class is going to okay uh, i think i've already given the answer to all your queries okay in case while developing this uh, game you come across any issues so you can uh, just uh, take the you can just take the see the previous lectures in which i've explained how you can install ursina and also uh, whatever issues you come across please do share it with me in the comment box definitely whenever i'll get the time i will check the comment section and i will try to reply to all your queries otherwise you can also join the uh, tomorrow session which i am going to take at 5:30 sharp fine so in that you can tell me about your queries you can try it today and after that whenever you get the time to uh, share with me your ideas your queries you can do the same uh, and otherwise you can just let me know about your queries in tomorrow in the lecture which i am going to take at 5:30 fine so this is it from my side in this lecture hope you guys enjoyed this one a lot please do not forget to like and share this video in your groups so as to make it reach to the maximum of students possible thank you very much all of you for liking the video and i hope you enjoyed this one a lot have a great day